So in this video today, I want to continue where I left off yesterday with requests in Python. And this is going to be a more realistic example. It's not completely useful because I didn't want to make this video too long, but I will show you how to use it in a real life use case. So the first thing is I want to show you Google Places API. That's what I'm going to use for this video. Basically, all I'm going to do is search for a place and then I'm going to search for the details of that place and in the results of the details I'm going to open up a link to Google Maps. Now I could do more of it in my application but like I said I didn't want to make this video too long so I just want to demonstrate interacting with the API. So I'm going to use two endpoints in the places API the search endpoint and the details endpoint search and details. But before you do this, you have to sign up um, with Google Developers, and you have to authorize, or not authorize, but place the Google Places API in your account, because by default, you don't have access to any APIs, I think. And then after you have Google Places API, you have to get a key. So here they have instructions on how to get a key. I already have my key. It's in a file called key.py. Show you my key for obvious reasons. But once you have your key, just place it in a file called key.py. And then you'll be able to use it in your application. So let me show you the code that I've written so far as a starting point. So let me show you the layout. Layout just includes jQuery and a script, which is over here. It's going to have an input that I'm going to use for a search box, a button for searching, and a link. This link is going to be eventually populated with a URL that when you click it, it opens a new tab with Google Maps for whatever place that you search for. And of course, you'll see this once I demonstrate it. Script.js simply has the click event for the search button. It sends a get request to the API that I'm creating. Um, it takes in query and it posts it or not posts it gets the send request endpoint and then once the search request is done it will add the result to the link so here's what the code looks like so far so I'm importing flask render template and jasonify those should be familiar if you watch my other videos if you haven't uh, they're just overhead in this video. They're not doing anything important. They're, one renders a template, one is going to return a JSON object so the script can read. Uh, requests is the main thing that I'm going to be showcasing in this video. I'm importing that. I'm importing my key from this file so key has to be in the same directory as API example. Um, from key I'm importing key. Really simple just so I can get this value and then I'm creating a Flask app. So I already have the URLs for the API. So the first is text search and the second is details. And I want JSON objects as the output. So let's just see here. So places search. Uh, you see this URL is the same one I have in my code. Output just needs to be replaced with either JSON or XML. And the parameters we'll talk about in a minute. And details is very similar. It has a URL. Uh, the Google Place API is not RESTful. So you can call it get requests, a post request, probably a put request, delete requests. I'm not completely sure on that one. And it will give you the same result. So it doesn't matter if you get or post. I'll be posting, no, I'll be getting in this video, but you can post as well. And posting is a little different than getting in. A request so just keep that in mind so here I have a route on the index which returns the layout that I showed you before and then I have this route send requests that takes in um, the query so here it's building this URL send requests and then query which is going to be um, whatever we're searching for and using that query I'm going to do something but for now, I just have this placeholder code URL, 
google.com and I'm returning a JSON object with the result as google.com. So let me run this just so we can see it in action. Okay, and then I'll run this here. So it doesn't matter what I search for, I'll search for something and then the URL should be populated. You see Google down at the bottom. Click it, it opens Google in a new window. Okay, so I'm not going to be using Google in the actual example that I'm about to write up, but that was just a placeholder. So let's get started writing the example. So the first thing we need to do is search for a certain place. So the way Google Place API works is you search for a place and it returns um, a list of, well, an array of objects telling you the search results. And in this video, I'm wanting I'm only going to search for obvious things, so I should get a response in the in the very first array. And that's what I'll be looking at. Not the first array, the first element in that array. So I'm looking at the wrong endpoint. So search. And here's what the response looks like down at the bottom. So it's a JSON object with um, this results array in it and then it's going to be ordered by relevancy I suppose and I'm just going to take the first one in this array because I'm doing a basic search and then I'm going to take the place ID from the results and I'm going to use it to send another request to the details so let's deal with the search request first so text search request it's telling me that I need to change the output to either JSON or XML. I'm going to be using JSON in this. And the required parameters for this are query and key. Key is the API key I was talking about before. You can get that through Google Developers. And then query is whatever I'm searching for. So let's build a request that will send those two things over to Google Place. So the first thing I want to do is create a payload object. So basically, all the keys and values of the data that I'll be sending over. In this case, the key and the query. So I'll just call this search payload. And key is going to be key that I imported from my key.py file. And then query is going to be whatever is passed to this route. So just query. And that's it. So these two things are getting passed. And then I need to start the request. So I'll say search request equals request dot get. And then I need to send these over to the search URL. So the first parameter is going to be search URL. And then I'll use a name parameter for the second, which is params. Since this is a GET request and I want to simulate having the long URL with the, uh, the question mark, the ampersands for all the key values, I'm going to use params. And requests will take care of converting that over to the proper format so Google can then read it when they get the request. So params is just going to be the search payload like that. So once I send this. I should get a response. Then what I want to do with the response is I'll take the JSON object that came from the response and get something out of it. So the first thing I want to do is say search JSON is going to be the search dot JSON. So this gives me the JSON representation of the data that was returned in the response. And I'm just assigning it to search JSON. And then what I want to do is I want to get the place ID. The place ID is somewhere in this search JSON. So let me look at the output again. So results. So it starts the JSON object and then results is the key that I want to look in first. So let's say search JSON and then results and then we see that it's a, an array and like I said at the beginning I want the very first thing in the array so I'll do this just the zeroth element and then after that I want the place ID 
So inside of this object that's first in the array, I have the place ID down here. So place underscore ID. Okay, so now I have this place ID. So that completes the first request. And let me just test it. So I just saved it and everything worked fine. I'm only testing to make sure it does an exception. So reload, nothing so far. And let me open the console, network, and I'll search for, it's a place to search, Staples Center. Okay, so everything worked well, no complaints. So I'm going to assume that it's working. So the next thing I want to do is I want to send a request to the details URL using the place ID. So let me go to the docs for details. So it's similar in that the output can be changed to JSON. I already changed that in the code. And then the parameters that are required are a key, which I already have, and then place ID or reference. I'll be using place ID. So those are the only two parameters I'll be using. So I'll create a new payload. I'll call this details payload. Key is going to be key once again. And place ID is going to be place ID. OK, and now I have to send the request. So details. I want to call this response. It makes more sense as response instead of request. So request.get. And then I'm going to use the details URL. And then params details payload. So I just sent the request. Well, this is where the request would be sent when this is running. Then I need to get the JSON object that's returned. So details JSON equals okay. So now that I have details JSON, I just need to know where to look to get what I'm looking for. So here's what it looks like. So the JSON object begins, and then we have results. So I'll start that here. So I'm going to take out google.com and I'll say details JSON result. And then there's no array, it's another object. And let's see, I'm, I'm looking for the URL. So do they have it in here? Yes, URL. So simply that. So now what should happen is I'll call this endpoint. It's going to search for the query first. And then from that query, it's going to get a place ID for the very first result. And it's going to take that place ID and search the details. And inside of the details, going to return a URL, which is a URL to Google Maps so we can actually see it on the map. So let me make sure there are no errors. Everything loaded fine. And I'll refresh the page. Okay, so let me try searching for Staples Center again. It returned, it took a while, but it returned. And now I see Google Maps is in the URL. So I'll click it. And it shows me Staples Center. Should show a little picture of Staples Center as well. Yeah, so let's search for something else. Let's search for Uh, it's hard to think of things to search for on the spot. Since I'm in Vegas, let's search for Bellagio. Yeah, I think that should be good enough. So Bellagio. Once it completes, I'll click the result, opens another one, and it shows the Bellagio Hotel in Casino. And it shows a nice picture of the inside. You know. So that was an example of how to consume a real API. I think in the next video, I'm going to make 
a video showing you how to take the image from the details and display it in your Python app, or at least display it um, in your view. So you don't have to go to Google Maps to see it. You can actually see it somewhere down here. So I think I'll make that video next. But in this video, I hope you understood how I made all this work. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below and I'll respond to everything. So thanks for watching.